This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about whether Bitcoin software is outdated. I've been getting a lot of emails and messages like this, people who are just discovering altcoins and cryptocurrency, usually for the first time. And it goes something like this. I just discovered Bitcoin two weeks ago, and here's what's wrong with it. It uses too much energy, this and that. And because of this Shiba Inu, Banana Coin, whatever it is, is better. Here's an example of an email I got that's very similar. I've, I've edited it and made it uh, private as well. In comparison, in comparison with Ethereum, I guess because Satoshi is no longer available to update the software, Ethereum owners can have new releases of software and cover a huge range of services, whereas Bitcoin software never upgrades. This is a big misconception, which we're going to be talking about in this video. Uh, I made a great profit on Bitcoin when you recommended it, and I bought Bitcoin at X and sold it at Y and re immediately replaced it with Ethereum. So there's this idea that Bitcoin is old tech, that it never gets upgraded. And this, this idea is really pushed by a lot of these new altcoin issuers and for obviously for their own profit. It's not true though. Bitcoin software is constantly being upgraded and monitored. As everyone knows, it's open source software, which means anyone can download it. Anyone can make changes. The tricky thing is if you do make changes, how do you get other Bitcoiners, full nodes and miners to run your new software version? And the answer is there's no way to force them to do it. Um, you can make your changes to the, to, to the software code, to what's called Bitcoin Core. You put in a pull request, which is a request to uh, change the code. And then if everyone likes it, the code change is added to the core software, to Bitcoin Core. Now, Bitcoin Core development, software development, is an inherently conservative project. Conservative, not in the political sense, but in the sense of conserving what already exists and trying to make as few changes as possible. The f first rule is really don't mess anything up. As a result, Bitcoin has fewer bills and whistles than many other coins. It's an extremely powerful software, but there's this trade-off between complexity, which means more attack surfaces, and having uh, the benefit of more bills and whistles. So there's this, there's this trade-off, and Bitcoin has chosen to be digital gold. So the two most important things about Bitcoin is that max cap supply of 21 million coins, and also doing everything possible to maintain a decentralized node network. And the way you do this is you keep the blockchain as small as possible in terms of the memory it takes up for those who run full nodes. And this is why there is the, the whole block size wars back in 2017, which we'll talk a little bit more about. But in this, in this uh, trade-off between complexity and security, Bitcoin will always emphasize security and decentralization over complexity. And this becomes increasingly important as Bitcoin's value goes up. And there's just so much of people's wealth uh, being stored in Bitcoin. This is one reason that the Bitcoin max supply is never going to be increased simply because it would dilute all the existing Bitcoin Bitcoiners wealth. The incentives go against doing something like that. By contrast, if you look at Ethereum and the various projects built on top of it and other uh, other DeFi protocols, you, you, you almost every day read about a new exploit or hack in which a DeFi protocol or an altcoin is attacked and money is stolen and drained off. This never happens to Bitcoin, which is one reason that billionaires and institutions choose to store their wealth in Bitcoin. Bitcoin prioritizes security over lots of bills and whistles. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe and like button and also share the video with a few friends, especially friends who are loading up on altcoins like this and who think that they uh, unfortunately think that they know a lot more than they do about the space. Now, here's a history of Bitcoin upgrades or versions. You can, you can see here that every it's really every six months. There's no set pattern, but these are the different core versions 
of the software. Now, the nice thing about the way Bitcoin Core has always operated is that you don't force someone to upgrade. You, do, you never would force a full node to upgrade to the new software. It's their choice. And Bitcoin Core is always backwards compatible. And so if you don't upgrade, you're still able to participate. In the Clark Moody uh, Bitcoin dashboard here, we can see the different versions of Bitcoin Core, Satoshi 18 all the way up to Satoshi uh, uh, 0.21, and the number of nodes that are running it. We can see that about 28% of reachable nodes are saying that they're running the most ver recent version of the software. I think this is a uh, this is actually a poll that's taken. I'm not sure it's it's possible to even know which ones they're running. But these these numbers give you a rough idea of which version of Bitcoin Core is being run. And as new versions are created, the nodes upgrade. Now, as we said, when a change to the Bitcoin Core software is proposed, there's a lot of discussion in the Bitcoin dev community. And then once it reaches a certain level of discussion, the change to the software is formalized in the form of what's called a BIP or a BIP, Bitcoin Improvement Proposal. If you go to the GitHub page for Bitcoin Core, you can see all the pull requests right here. And then you can also see the state of various Bitcoin improvement proposals, various uh, BIPs, and you can scroll through. And if you're much more tech literate than I am, you will understand this stuff better. As I said, Bitcoin updates are always backwards compatible. If you're a node, you don't need to upgrade if you don't want to. This is very different from the very centralized and heavy-handed development that takes place at places like Ethereum and Cardano, where you have these constant hard forks. The community pretends to be completely decentralized, but these hard forks are driven by people like Charles Hoskinson and Vitalik Buterin, who really dictate what's going to happen. There's, there's a veneer pretending that it's a democracy, uh, but it's, it's impossible to imagine a situation where Vitalik is against uh, something and uh, the community uh, does, it, does it anyway. Now, a lot of you have been asking about the Taproot upgrade, which is, uh, is in the works and will probably be uh, put into effect sometime later this year. This upgrade is actually three different BIPs, three different Bitcoin improvement proposals. It's number 340, 341, and 342. Now, BIP 340, the Bitcoin improvement proposal, introduces Schnorr signatures, which is a, a form of cryptography uh, that's going to allow it's just a much more efficient form than what is existing in the current core software. This will allow more transactions per block without having to increase the block size. Schnorr signatures will also make it uh, impossible to distinguish a multi-sig wallet from a single signature wallet. And this will provide a lot more privacy for those who are running uh, network, uh, Lightning Network channels, which uses two of two multi-sig. Multi-sig is just when you need multiple signatures to move some Bitcoin uh, or to sign, to sign for it. Now, chain analysis firms they, the blockchain is obviously completely public. Chain analysis firms analyze the data on the blockchain and they try to trace what's happening. And so it is a bit problematic if you can distinguish between a, a single SIG and a multi-SIG address. There's no reason the world needs to know that. A lot of Bitcoin hodlers like myself use multi-SIG addresses and uh, multi-SIG to store our Bitcoin in a safe a safe way. And so this uh, BIP, BIP340 will make it impossible to distinguish multi-sig transactions from single-sig transactions and this will provide much more anonymity in particular for lightning network channels which is a second layer solution that's used to uh, uh, send transactions much more cheaply and then they're aggregated and put back on the chain i still i think i still need to do a video about uh, the lightning network schnorr signatures will also allow more complex multi-sig right now we have uh, two out of three and three out of five multi-sig, where if you have two out of three keys, you can move the Bitcoin or three out of five keys. This will be much more flexible under the taproot upgrade. In addition, transaction fees will be lower, especially for multi-sig transactions. And uh, this will also be better for smart contracts on Bitcoin. In the past, you needed to post 
the entire script inside of each transaction input for smart contracts. And this was much more expensive because it takes up more space on the blockchain. I still need to make a video about smart contracts and Bitcoin, which is an emerging area. Now, miners will need to signal, Bitcoin miners will need to signal whether they're in favor of this upgrade. And I believe the way it works, it's a little complicated. I'm going to link to an article, but the basic way it's worked in the past is if over a two week period, which is a certain number of blocks between the, what's called the difficulty adjustment, if 95% of the blocks during that period show that, that, that each miner is in favor or each mining pool, or I think it's actually 95% of the hash power is in favor of the upgrade, then it will happen. If you want to dig into it, I didn't think it was that important to include in this video. Uh, here's a, a fairly good article. Uh, it's from July of 2020, so it's a, sl a little bit out outdated, but it does show the various pathways to uh, the way that Taproot could be upgraded, whether using BIP8, BIP9, or a soft fork. Uh, so I'll link to that so you can, you can see it. Meanwhile, it looks like, I want to say this is 37% of the blocks have signaled uh, in the last in the last two two week period that the that the miners behind them are ready to upgrade to uh, to Taproot, and we've been seeing up, uh, updates on Twitter, for example, various uh, Bitcoin mining pools pool in, for example, uh, fully signaling for Taproot, and they have 12.9 percent of the total Bitcoin cash rate. So I think it actually, as I said, hash rate. I think I misspoke. It's actually the number of trailing uh, blocks. You need 95% of the blocks in order to do uh, an upgrade. That being said, uh, it really looks, as far as I can tell from my reading, it looks like the taproot upgrade is a very good thing. It's a very smart thing. It's done in a conservative manner. And the majority of full nodes and miners and developers are in favor of it. So it's, it's almost certain uh, to happen sometime between now and November. If you want to learn more about the decentralized nature and the interaction between Bitcoin developers, Bitcoin core developers, Bitcoin miners, Bitcoin full nodes, and even the corporations that use Bitcoin, big companies like Grayscale and Coinbase, and um, how governance works with Bitcoin. I'd encourage you to take a look at this video in which I talk about who actually controls Bitcoin and how there's this this interplay between miners, uh, miners, whales, corporations, and full nodes. And spoiler alert, it turns out it's actually the full nodes who are behind it. I go into a lot of detail. I talk about the 2017 block wars and how this shows you uh, that Bitcoin is really a project that's, that's driven by the full nodes. The full nodes have the final say, unlike many other altcoins. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.